way down south, darkies picking cotton. Picking cotton that you may be entertained. Why? That's easily answered. If it were not for cotton, there might not be any movies today. It is from these snow-white blossoms that celluloid motion picture film is made. Rochester, New York, Kodak Park, inside the Kodak plant, where cotton from way down south is transformed into celluloid, where we discover the cotton being treated with a mixture of acids to transform it into nitro-cotton, which, dissolved, forms a substance of the consistency of honey. This is spread on the polished surfaces of great wheels. Heat around these giant wheels drives the liquids from the substance and permits the thick fluid to assume the form of thin, transparent layers. The celluloid receives its emulsion, which makes it sensitive to light. It is on this emulsion that the photographic image is picked up. The principal ingredient of the sensitizing salts is silver. The Kodak Works uses more than five tons of silver every week. Yes, we said five tons. That means more than a half million pounds of silver a year that goes into the manufacture of a billion feet of motion picture film. Enough film to encircle the earth eight times. These wide strips of celluloid later are slit into narrow strips of motion picture film, 35 millimeters wide and 1,000 feet in length. And as this precious film is sealed tight in light-proof containers for shipment to Hollywood, the world's cinema capital, our scene shifts from east to west, from Rochester to Hollywood, where the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer studios are humming with activity. Preparations are in full swing for the production of the great new pictures of the 1937-1938 season, soon to find their way to the film you have just seen made. At Metro Golden Mayor, hundreds of men are building a miracle city, a composite of many cities, of any great American metropolis, of French villages, of English hamlets, Italian streets, dirt flies, hammers ring in rhythm, and soon this chaos you now see will become the world's biggest motion picture set. These brief glimpses of MGM's progressive building program start us on a tour of the studio. We pause for a hurried inspection of the mill, where sets are built, of the paint shop, the precision machine shop, the electrical plant which every day generates enough power to light a city of 100,000 people. Our next stop is among our most interesting backstage glimpses, where we meet Jack Dawn, Hollywood's master of makeup. Mr. Dawn shows you sketchily how he creates a new character. The stage where screen tests are made, where rise and fall the hopes of budding film personalities, where the stars of tomorrow first catch the eyes of MGM directors, and where the lucky few who survive their tests continue their training under the direction of skillful dramatic coaches. This stage might well be called the school of experience. What a thrill it must have been for Virginia Gray to make her first screen test with Clark Gable. As I told you before, if you're planning on Mr. Madison as a victim, you might just as well give up. <laughs> well, you can't blame me for being ambitious. The bugaboo of Hollywood movie stars, the candid cameraman, the prying eye that sees all and tells all. It's Robert Montgomery on one of those rare days in California when the sun shines. And when that sun shines, brother, it's hot. Cliff, ukulele, Ike Edwards. Boy, lift your feet. Rosalind Russell on her way to the stage where live, love, and learn is in production. Valiant is the word for Gladys George, hurrying to rehearsal for her next great performance, that of Madame X. No, this isn't Oliver Hardy, just the little boy who brings Jesse Ralph to the studio. It's Don Loomis, physical director to the stars. Hey, Don, do something for the folks, will you? Maureen O'Sullivan has just been handed her part as Robert Taylor's leading lady in a yank at Oxford, next to the wardrobe, where we pause to meet Adrian king of fashion, creator of the style-setting vogues for which MGM stars are renowned the world over. Adrian is completing a sketch for a gown to be worn by Jeanette McDonald in her glorious successor to Maytime, The Firefly. Our pause at the music department must be brief. 
but we do catch a glimpse of famed composer and conductor Herbert Stothard as he directs the music for the spectacular production Conquest. <laughs> I've waited for this moment so long. You were right. My marriage was fatal to me. half of the bathroom is in the hall and uh, to the right. Ah, well, this is what I call the bathroom friendly. Uh, your bedroom. Yes. with your hair flying in the breeze. Uh, no one second thought of beach. Yes, your hair would fly better on the beach. What are you going to say? Nothing. Oh, well, don't you want to talk about something? Yes. Do you take dope? And here's exciting last minute news. Flash, Edward G., Little Caesar Robinson, signs MGM contract to portray title role of The Last Gangster. Flash, Wallace Beery starts before the cameras this week in that colorful saga of the Southwest, The Bad Man of Brimstone. Flash, metro golden Mayor will present soon the story of Annapolis, navy blue and gold. The management of this theater is proud to announce that it has contracted for all of the 1937-38 metro golden Mayor productions. Watch our newspaper announcements and let this parade of stars be your guide to the finest entertainment any theater can offer. <laughs>